Hey, this is Brooks with Character Design Forge. Procreate on the iPad Pro is absolutely my favorite art app, hands down. It's designed with the artist in mind. You can take it anywhere, your desk, the couch, the coffee shop, outdoors when it's raining, not a great idea. Who would do this? I've made videos in the past that can help you to get started with Procreate. And since I've been using it daily in a professional capacity for a few years now, I thought I'd put together a few things that you may or may not already know about Procreate, some things that I didn't even know about until recently, and some that have been added in up updates that just make using the app quicker, easier, and better. First things first, there's quite a few functions hidden behind a press and hold feature in Procreate. For example, to cycle between your current color and the previous one, just press and hold on the color button. This is great for times when you're constantly swapping between two colors. Number two, if you want to erase with the same brush that you're drawing with, which is often useful to get the same consistent texture throughout a piece, have the brush selected and press and hold the eraser. You can do the same in reverse by pressing and holding the brush to use the currently selected eraser. Number three, rounding out the trilogy of press and hold functions, pressing and holding a layer checkbox, which toggles its visibility, will make only this layer visible and hide every other. So you can sort of isolate what you need to. Performing this again will bring everything back. Number four, some folks miss the gradient tool found in Photoshop. However, it's very easy to create gradients in Procreate using the built-in soft airbrush. The brush on its own acts as a radial gradient, and drawing in a line, of course there's the quick line feature in Procreate, that will make a linear gradient. You can always use this with a clipping mask, and you can size the gradient up, and of course, Gaussian blur as needed in order to soften anything that you need to. Number five, speaking of Gaussian blur, if you'd like to make something glow, like a lantern or lightsaber effect, first duplicate the solid color that you want to glow, use the Gaussian blur to make it extend past that initial boundary, and then use the add or color dodge layer mode to make it look like it's a glowing light source. Adjust the opacity of the layer as needed to get the desired look. Number six, symmetry is a really useful tool to use in Procreate, which is located under the drawing guide menu under the wrench. Click Edit Guide, Symmetry, and then Assisted Drawing to turn Symmetry on. You can move the line and the points on the line, as well as change the color of the line in order to draw across it symmetrically. Also available here are Horizontal, Quadrant, and Radial Symmetry, which can make some really cool effects or save time drawing things like wheels or flowers. Symmetry is often helpful when concepting mechanical things or props. To turn Assisted Drawing off quickly, instead of going back through this menu, which can be a pain, just tap the layer that you're drawing on and tap Drawing Assist to toggle it off. Number seven, you may come up against some issues due to layer limits in Procreate. These are built-in caps on the amount of layers that you can use in order to prevent any crashing or freezing of the app. The amount of layers that you can use depends on the resolution and the model of iPad that you use. If you're like me and you're hesitant to make any changes to your art that you can't undo or unflatten, Swipe on the document to the left and hit duplicate in order to create a new save state of your document. All of the original work will still be there in the original. Number eight, let's answer one of the most common questions an artist gets, which is what kind of brush do you use? Well, there are some great built-in brushes for Procreate, but purchasing custom brushes has made all the difference too. My bread and butter brush is Terra's Oval Sketch 2, which doubles as a very brushy, hard texture for thumbnailing broad stuff when big, and it makes for a great pencil when small. I also love Max Ulichny's brushes, especially his recent gouache pack, which let me tell you, I've previously said that the smudge tool isn't something you should use, but Max has made an entire smudge pack of gouache brushes, which are amazing. And it really adds the texture to the smudge and makes all the difference. I'll add links to those in the notes below. Number nine, you're probably familiar with the liquify tool when it's used on photographs, especially to quote unquote fix imperfections. But Liquify is a great tool to use on sketches. Instead of drawing and redrawing the same lines, Liquify is a great time saver to get a part of a sketch looking just right. Liquify is under the little wand icon, and the push, expand, and contract tools are ones that I most often use. Not in place of art, skill, but mostly as an efficiency measure. You can also Liquify across multiple layers if you have them selected. Number 10, if you're drawing and coloring the same character over and over, make sure to use the palette tool under the color menu. You can create custom palettes. I usually make one for each character. 
and whatever selected color that you have, you can tap on an empty space in the palette and fill. And of course, you can press and hold to delete any spaces that you don't want. Number 11, if you're like me, moving and scaling things that you've selected freely can leave you readjusting unnecessarily, when all you wanted to do was move in a straight line or scale perfectly. So make sure that you use the magnetic option on the far left of the cursor buttons menu. You'll even get on-screen help like lines that show that you're moving exactly horizontally. Number 12, instead of using the eraser and brush tool, you may find it useful to use the lasso tool and polygonal lasso tool to carve and fill shapes. I always find it useful to create the perfect silhouette of my final character and then use clipping masks to build up additively from there. One bonus tip, number 13, is that you can actually animate in Procreate, which I made a whole video on last week if you haven't already seen it. Speaking of adjacent videos, next week, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, is a big ol' video. It's huge. I've been working on it for actually a few months now. There's custom music that I commissioned for it that sounds a little something like this, so please be here for it, subscribe, and turn on notifications for it. It's gonna be big. If this video helped you, please give it a like, even share it with someone that you think it could help, and if you'd like to see more from me, I'm Bagel Denizen on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and now Amino. If you'd like to keep my forge burning, you can do so over on patreon.com slash bageldenizen. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating.